Today I'm gonna to be working on my Toyota T100. And what's going on with this vehicle is that it's dropping or it's losing a lot of power steering fluid every time I drive in. I have to um, top it off each time. It's really annoying. It might just be time to get a new pump. Uh, maybe I, what I'm gonna to try to do first is remove it and replace all the seals that's within this this um this pump and then reinstall it and see if if the leaking continues and if the leaking continues i'm obviously going to have to replace the whole pump um let's get started just so that you're aware this is a 1993 toyota t100 with a 3vze motor First, what I'm gonna do is open up the cap, check inside, and you can see that the reservoir is pretty, almost halfway down from what it should be. And I'm gonna remove all the old trans or all the old power steering fluid out of the reservoir, so it just make it easier so I don't make a big spill underneath. And what I'm gonna be using is like a turkey baster to suck up all the fluid and I'm putting it in this bottle and show you how dirty it probably is. Here's our old power steering fluid. Um, yeah, that, that ain't good. It's all brown. Um, the thing about this, these power steering pumps, is that they take automatic transmission fluid. Bef before I did um, um, do like a flush on this reservoir, but I was like, that was like two years ago. And I was just going off with what the O'Reilly people told me, and they gave me uh, a power uh, fluid that just says power steering universal for many cars, and that's not what these trucks take. They take um, automatic transmission fluid, Dextron 2. That's what this truck in particular takes for the power steering pump. So you wanna do your research before you put any other fluid um the power steering fluid that i got from o'reilly's probably like messed up my seals even more which caused an even bigger um um fluid leaks so it's always best to know what you need to get for your particular vehicle you don't want to end up having a bigger problem than you than you already have now that i've siphoned as much um power steering fluid as i can i'm gonna try removing the 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 hoses and then um get rid of the get the timing belt out of the way um and try to dismount the whole pump now what I'm gonna do is get some pliers or some tweezers to remove these clamps from the hoses or to loosen the clamps on the hoses so the hose can slide off. So I got the clamp out of the way, now I'm just gonna down to slide it off so i finally got the first hose off um bit of a struggle uh didn't really have uh, fluid 
leaking or dropping when I took it off because I, we did empty out the reservoir. So you're fine there, but all right. But the second line that you're gonna have to take off, it's this one and it has a bolt. You're gonna wanna have to use a 22 millimeter socket to get it out. Um, when you take this one off, it's probably gonna leak since um, there's power steering fluid probably down here at the bottom where we couldn't get it from the actual reservoir which ends here so there's there's going to be some leakage that's why i have a a drain pan down there or a catch pan down there to catch whatever um power steering fluid falls to the ground so it's been a struggle to take off the second hose so what i'm going to do is just take off the reservoir taking off these three bolts take off the reservoir be able to put a a wrench there to hold that nut because that nut keeps moving when I'm trying to take out this bolt and so the whole thing moves and I and this bolt won't be able to come out when these are moving so I'm gonna take this out be able to fit so that I'll be able to fit a wrench in there to grab that now in order to take off the the reservoir i'm gonna take out the three bolts holding it which is gonna be they're all gonna be 12 millimeters i know they're gonna be i know i said that they were gonna be uh 12 millimeter bolts but this one's gonna be a 14 millimeter one in order to get to the last bolt this one's also gonna be a 14 millimeter bolt i loosened the the power steering pump to be able to adjust it to get a good angle at this last bolt also just probably sh i should probably just take out the, the take off the belt since i'm already here all right i got the three bolts off and you can just pull it up and there's your reservoir there's your reservoir all pulled out from the power steering pump now it's loose i can take off the bolt and take off the hose without any problem now bolt out I guess I could take off these pliers now bolts out hoses out a washer just fell but that's okay because that's going to be replaced in our seal kit now in order to take off the whole power steering pump I'm going to have to take off um I'm gonna have to take out the, I don't know how to say it, but it's like the bolt that adjusts this, that adjusts the, the pump with the, with the belt, the drive belt, which is gonna be this one right here and the one back here, right there. Take those out and then the whole pump should be able to slide out. Oh yes, and both bolts will be 14 millimeter socket or wrench. Looks like I ran into a bit of an issue taking this bolt out. It's too long and it's hitting the, the pulley. So I'm gonna have to remove the pulley first or else the pump won't be able to get out. So let's put this back in. And let's try to take out the the pulley first before we take the bolts out now how i'm gonna take off the the pulley is by taking off the 17 millimeter nut but i'm using these these pliers to hold back the pulley while i'm taking out the nut so it'd be easier now i was able to break the nut loose now I'm gonna just unscrew it by hand this is the 17 millimeter nut that's in front of the pulley and now you can just take off these pliers that was holding back the pulley just take them off let's get a, a bar to push the pulley um, the rest of the way out Got myself a mini pry bar here. 
And what you're gonna wanna do is nudge it in between. So I took the, the pulley off. So now all that remains are those two bolts that I mentioned, this one and this one down here. This one, and it should be able to slide out. There are the two bolts. Now, just slide. Here's the power steering pump. What I'm gonna do is just clean it all up. All right, I got most of the big gunks of dried up oil off the off the pump. I just picked around with this with a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, to get most of the gunk out. I also used a, a rag just to wipe out, um, just to wipe off the the rest of the oil um uh, it's still pretty dirty i'm gonna probably have i'm just gonna take piece by piece apart and then um use um degrease engine degreaser to really penetrate and get rid of the dirt and then probably afterwards I, i'm probably just gonna um uh, respray it make it look ni nice inside the engine bay all right i'm gonna start taking off this front bracket right here and what you're gonna need to do these are 14 millimeter bolts and the back there's this back plate these are also 14 millimeter bolts i already loosened them up um back here this is where i had the most leakage coming from so we'll see what's going on back there and this bolt i'm not too sure what this is but i'll take it off all right so i took the back plate off and the bracket as you can see here um, this is how the back looks like. Um, looks like there's like a metal seal that goes around it that I can take out. Just the old seal. Um, this, I got this bolt right here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. I loosened it up. Let's take it out right now. I don't know what it is for, but it doesn't really look like there's anything that really goes there. Um, yeah, let me know what this is about. I have to remove this. This nut right here, which is a 23 millimeter nut. It's probably like a seal underneath. Well, I got the nut on the side removed. This is how it looks like inside. It's like a little valve. It's a valve that pushes the, the fluid out, the fluid out. It looks like there's a there's an o-ring right there right there i might that's probably good i'm probably gonna replace that too so back here in this where i took off the back plate i'm taking off that metal um seal with this metal toothpick tool you really have to get underneath it and right now i'm just going all the way around until it comes out there you go, I mostly got all of it, all of it out. All I did was was uh, stick this metal, metal toothpick underneath, one all the way around till it popped out. Now I could just probably just pull it out. There we go. This plate back here pops out. And that's what it looks like inside. Don't really know what I'm looking at. There's an O-ring right around this plate. So we'll re be replacing it with an O-ring. So I popped this inner valve out. Inside, there's a spring. So this is what the inside valve looks like. Looks like there's a O-ring there too. This spring goes together with this, and I'll put this right here for now. This front seal's been really giving me trouble, but I'm almost there taking it out. I tried, sorry, I tried using this, the metal toothpick tool, scraped around, 
and it's almost out. I've got it. See that? Yeah, that seal is going to be replaced. All right, here comes this inner plate out. So it looks like inside. And for this inner plate right here, it also looks like there's another O-ring that goes inside right here. So that's gonna be replaced. Looking at this oil pump, you can see how it works. It picks up as it rotates when the engine's on. It gets all the oil from down here all the way around, all the way from down here. Picks it up, throws it all the way up here, out this valve to the power steering rack. And it's just interesting, it's neat. Looks like the inner chamber came out. And in order to get these little like metal fans out with everything, there's this, there's this um, clip around the gears in the middle. Take that out and everything should come out. It's gonna be right here. Gonna be replacing that too. Here you can see the little metal clip it took off from inside the power steering that was around the the top of the gears now the these the rod with the gears can just slide right on out from the front there's the front rod removed i went ahead and took out the blades from this like hub so now we mostly just have an empty um power steering housing don't really know how to remove that pretty stuck on there i don't think you have to remove that i don't see anything else that would need a seal so you're gonna have to also try to take this part out um now i have a complete uh empty housing but yeah this one was a quite hard to get out i had to um, um basically fight it i went from the other side um let's see i went from here and i punched it out with the with uh with a mallet and the and a screwdriver um be careful when you're doing this you don't want to break anything but yeah, got that out of the way. Now, with this, you'll see that this also needs another O-ring right in the center. Around. Right there. These are our new seals. This is the little bag that, came, that they came in. I'll put a link down in the description. You can get these from Amazon or just go to O'Reilly's. All right, here's our power steering pump housing all painted up. Looks really nice, clean. Also went ahead and painted the pulley and the reservoir. Yeah, looks sick. Um, now that I got that all, all out of the way, it's just time to put everything all together. Put it on the new gas skits where they need to go on the parts and basically go in reverse of how I took it off, how I took everything apart to be able to put everything back together. All right. All right, so here's the power steering housing. And what we're gonna wanna do is put in this off front bearing in. But before you ins install it, you're gonna wanna put some uh, on the seal you're gonna want to put some high temperature um, grease in, inside right here right around inside you know just for lubrication 
inside I put uh, grease just so that the little spring inside won't come out. It's, it's installation grease. So you're gonna wanna try to see if you can slide it in. You're probably gonna have to hit it with like a with like a mallet slowly. You don't want you don't wanna put too much hit it too hard and then you break the the seal and it won't work. You'll you're gonna get leakage all over the place again. Seal is in. Again, all I did was grab a mallet, slowly tapped on it till it started going in and then I went around trying to make it sure that it goes in evenly like all the parts that you took out you want to clean them with uh, with brake cleaner or parts or any parts cleaner um, before reinstalling um, you can also just use um, soapy water inner back plate that will get this um, o-ring off right here you might want to use your handy little metal toothpick to take it out. There's our old O-ring. And so in the the seal kit, it's gonna you're gonna have to wanna put one of these big um new O-rings onto the plate. Should just be able to easily slide on. Now you're just gonna wanna slide it in through the pin inside the the power steering housing. Uh, there's not really any wrong way to put this back in because that other hole is smaller, so it wouldn't even go in there. So you don't have to worry about which is which. And this part, the shiny silver part, has to be facing towards you. Now our next step is to install the shaft with this um with the inner teeth i guess you could say so this we just slide it in through the front shaft slid in remember this is where our, our pulley is going to be mounted on that's where the bolt's going to lock it so it should look like inside then when we put in this part you want to make sure this little notch right here this little dot that you see is facing towards you when you're installing it. That's how it was when we removed it. So now that's in. Our next step is going to have to be putting that lock ring that goes in between the teeth. This will be the lock ring wire. You're just going to want to slide it on top of there. So it can lock in place. All right, got most of it in. The, mostly just did this with my fingers. There, locked. Want to slide in the cam chamber. Uh, make sure that the that this is the position that it's gonna be put at. You see that there's a little indentation right there. The indentation is going to be facing your way, and it's going to be, um, it's going to be the indentation is going to be towards the down position. So you're going to want to see that the cam chamber is going to be like as slanted at a certain angle, like that, that way. And then you're going to want to start sliding in those. Um, blades or what they're actually called are veins into the into the these spaces and you're going to want to have to look at them closely because you don't want to put a, install them the wrong way right here it's actually curved down here it's squared off and the curved part is going to be facing uh, outwards So the top right here is curved like this. You can barely see it with your eyes, but it's there. So all the veins are in there. Next comes the the second inner back plate. 
and with the new gasket on already have that ready and then what I've been doing was also lubricating lubricating them going all the way around where the o-ring is with um, the transmission fluid that is required for this power steering pump there's the inner back plate next we're gonna put in the main back plate and seal it off new o-rings on lubricated and make sure that little notch or that little indentation is facing upwards you can see right there right there that one remember before putting on the main back plate there was this little spring that was just sitting like like this but I don't know if it moved when I popped off the main back plate so I think it was mostly like this there you go main back plates all pressed in I had to hit it a couple times with with the mallet just to get it in all the way right now what you're gonna want to do put back the or this the new metal ring lock that you're gonna have to put inside right here see probably gonna need two hands for this just tuck one part in and go all the way around there you go snapped in Next, we'll reinstall the valves first. We'll reinstall this inner valve. And when you look at the end here, I thought that was an O-ring. Turns out it's not, it's part, it's a metal piece that's part of the of the part. And I tried taking it off and it turns out it's made of copper. See, right there. I almost damaged the whole thing trying to take it out. So don't try messing with that. So what you want to, how you want to put this in is spring goes in first and then your inner valve should go in something like this. Make sure that it goes in right there. Next up, you'll install the exit valve and you're going to have to put a new O-ring right here that's in your kit. Go ahead and screw it in with your hand first, as tight as you as tight as you can. And then I'm probably just gonna get a socket to tighten it probably up to like 10 foot pounds or just tighten as much as I can with my hand. They're just gonna tighten it as much as I can. I couldn't find any forums or any man manuals about how to tighten how much to tighten these bolts up to for the for the power steering pump so I'm just gonna hand tighten it as best as I can hopefully it doesn't leak next I reinstalled that outer back plate with its 14 millimeter bolts I torqued them down to 14 foot pounds before reinstalling the the reservoir down here there's an o-ring that needs to be replaced and that is in your kit Reinstalled the reservoir onto the onto the power steering pump. Lined up all the bolts. Remember, the two bolts on the side are 14 millimeter, and the one in front is a 12 millimeter. And I torqued them down to about 10 to 14 foot pounds. Mostly hand tighten it, and make sure to use um blue thread lock nut, so it won't loosen up when there's high vibration forgot i almost forgot that one 10 millimeter bolt that was up here i reinstalled it still don't know what it was for but yeah just put it back go ahead and put the front bracket on the two four, 14 millimeter bolts torqued them down to 14 foot pounds as well and now should be ready to reinstall again into the engine bay
that were in the engine bay, you're gonna to wanna to mount it back where you, you took it off from. You know, get your, that long 14 millimeter bolt and your other 14 millimeter bolt on the bracket. I went ahead and respread the bracket as well inside. Uh, you don't have to do that, of course. Now, it's time to put on the pulley and the other stuff. Next, we're gonna reinstall the the hoses. I already got the first hose that goes to the reservoir. Next would be the second hose. Um, this is the bolt. And you're gonna need these two copper washers that will go with the hose. So. One like this. And the bolt goes through here. And the other washer will be on the other side. So now you got the two. Then you just thread it in. Thread it, screw it in, screw it in. And then you're gonna want to tighten it with a with a 22 millimeter socket. 22. So I went ahead and filled the the reservoir with some automatic transmission fluid, which is what this pump takes again. Dextron 2. Um, just checking to see if there's no leakage, nothing, no drips. I don't see any anything dripping. The back looks dry. Uh, front looks dry. Front seal looks dry. Uh, yeah, you also don't want to be running this um, dry. <laughs> Obviously, you want to put some some um, power steering fluid in there before you turn it on. But yeah, for the most part, everything seems fine right now. Um, we'll check later when it's all turned on or we'll wait a bit but now i'm gonna put on the pulley and if you see here right here in the front a little notch fell out and i have it i'm just gonna put it back and then slide in the pulley and then tighten the pulley with the with its bolt that goes in the front this is the little notch thing that i was talking about it comes out when I was cleaning it and you want to make sure that it's back there when you're putting on the pulley. Right, I pushed the pulley as far furthest as, I, as it can go and then I was able to put the bolt in front. Now I'm going to just tighten it up and it should make the pulley be able to go all the way back to the position it needs to be in. Um, you might want to put some clamps right here. Right right here in order to to hold the, the pulley from moving in order to slide it in driven this truck for a couple of days I haven't noticed any leaking around the power steering pump the power steering pump seems dry um, the only leaking that I have seen is from this hose so that's a completely a different project that I need to fix um, but it looks like just rebuilding the power steering pump everything's turned out to be all right I haven't needed to top it off or re or refill the fluid so everything seems good